Welcome back to Advent of Code. Today we are going to do day seven. This is the initial uh, visualization for day six. There's some more work to do here, but this is a small bevy app that shows the guard's path. And we'll do a little bit more and I'll make a video on it later. So let's jump into day seven. There's a rope bridge mentioned in this one. That's 2022 day nine. Uh, bridge broke. We need to repair it. Some young elephants stole all the operators from their calibration equations. This is our puzzle input. Each line represents an equation. So this is the test value on the left and these need to be combined with some operation. These are processed left to right. So 11, let's say times six plus 16 times whatever. We can only add and multiply, which means we have a number of combinations here. Engineers need the total calibration result, which is the sum of all the test values from just the equations that can possibly be true. So we do need to, I think, test them all. So let's create day seven. Get into part one with our input here, and then this is our answer. Um, there are somewhat obviously like a finite amount of combinations that can work. How big is this number? Three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14 digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I think we have to use a U64 for the actual implementation. So that's good to know. We can write a quick parser today. It's gonna be really straightforward. We're gonna do a separated list on the line endings and then a separated pair and then a many one or maybe maybe we'll do a separated list here and we'll do a space one for the separator and a complete uh, u64 here and i think that if we do input here get all of our inputs in here or get all of our imports in here rather bring everything into scope so this is actually going to be a vec of this right so we've got a separated list which is a vec separated by the line endings inside of each line ending we have a separated pair separated by this colon space, where the left-hand side is a U64 and the right-hand side is a bunch of numbers separated by spaces. And this is the entire parser. So if we parse here, then we get a vec of U64 and equation tuples. We can debug the equations here. And then we get things like 190, 1019, 3267, these three numbers. I think the last one is 292, 11, 6, 16, 20. All of that works. So one thing that I can notice here is that we have a limited number of potential combinations, right? Like something with a length of two is length minus one operators, which would give us the opportunity to put a plus or a multiplication here. And we have a limited number of, or like a finite number of numbers of operators. So this one is one, this one is two, one, one, three, two, two, three, three. We can probably just do these combinations once as an optimization later, but I'll probably start off with not doing that at all. What do we actually need to calculate here? The sum of the test values from the equations that could possibly be true. So equations that filter, probably filter map, we'll have test and numbers. And at the end here, we probably sum into a U64. This of course, we can test just by returning an option here. Oh, right, I didn't write iter here. <laughs> We can write iter here. We can also into iter here. We don't need to reference it at all. Uh, it doesn't really matter for us. So in this case, we're failing because of this and we can okay result dot to string and we should get a number that's way too high, which we do. So numbers dot length minus one is the number of operators we need, right? And let's see if that's one, two, one, one. Let's see, one, two, one, one. Yeah, that looks right to me. Now, multi-Cartesian product or rather Cartesian product, let's start there, exists in iter tools. This would work for needing two of them. Multi-Cartesian product would work for n number of them. So maybe we stick operators up here. We say this is zero dot dot operator count. And it really doesn't matter which one it is because we always need operators. This needs to come from iter tools. And then theoretically we debug the sequences. And if I maybe do a print line here for some new line and we can probably change this to print line as well, just to get a single line here. So here we can get kind of a separator and then our sequence is star and plus for the first one. Let's find one with operator count of two, which we're debugging late. So uh, that would be star star, star plus, plus star, plus plus. So we've got all of our combinations here that we need. And then it's really any of them that we need to actually have. So we don't need to return this and we don't need to do a for loop here either and get rid of these extra parens. And if this finds something, then some test, I think, right? And any here has to take the sequence, right? 
I say that total equals numbers dot window, maybe. Window isn't the right thing. I guess we're gonna fold here. Actually, one interesting thing about fold versus reduce is that reduce will start with the first item. So this isn't actually being set here. So reduce will give us two numbers and the left-hand side is gonna be the accumulator as we can see in the docs here and the right side will be the next item. At first, this is going to be the first item and the second item and then it'll be uh, the accumulator past that. So this is going to be, since sequence is a vec, let's do let mute s equals seek dot iter. And then this can be match s dot next dot unwrap because it always has to exist or this won't work for us at all. Um, total is not found in scope because this is actually test, not total. And then this will be unwrapped because reduce won't mess with us. So if we are star, then it's a times b. If we're plus, then it's a plus b. I think our references are a little bit off here. Let's do into iter here. And one of the things I wanna do here is even though we're iterating over this, I kinda of just wanna get actual U64s out of this. So if we don't have copied here, we end up with references. If we do have copied here, then we end up with values. Test then also needs to be dereferenced. And actually, did our test just pass? <laughs> I think our test just passed. So we're actually probably done here. But so for part one, let's make sure that this is actually working. Make this fail. So we do fail here and then let's get day seven part one running. This is allegedly the number. Submit that, we got a gold star, sick. So part one, fairly straightforward, I think. I wrote this kind of like in a line. So there's a lot of kind of rightward drift and you know, I could probably clean this up, make it easier to read. The parser was a separated list. So get each line, separated list by line ending. This is a cross platform line ending. And then inside of each line, we have a separated pair of which the left-hand side is the U64. The separator is a colon and a space. And then the right-hand side is a separated list, which is numbers separated by spaces. We use U64 because I looked at the input and I know we need it. And that gives us a vec of tuples where the left-hand side is the total that we need to test against. And the right-hand side is all the numbers. Now to get the equations running here, we take all the equations, we iterate over them one by one. And then we want to filter map here. Although Clippy might warn me about this. Clippy does not warn me about this. Sometimes I use then some and I overuse it and Clippy warns me and says, hey, you shouldn't use that, but not this time. <laughs> so we get the filter map, which takes the equations, which is remember that vec of these tuples. And what we're saying here is we're going to filter this down by some test. And then we're going to map it into a different result or a different data type. In this case, we're getting in a tuple of the test number on the left and the vec of numbers on the right. And at the end, we're mapping into just a U64 because if the test passes, we just need the test number. We get our operator count. So this is the number of operators we need to slot in between the numbers. And we turn that into a range and we iterate over it. That allows us to basically create a number of iterators that all happen to be these two operators. So if this is zero dot dot three, let's say, then we get zero, one, and two. Then we get three basically copies of operators as iterators, which we then throw into multi-Cartesian product, which will give us the combinations of all of those that we need. And I know I'm saying combinations and not mathematical combinations, but in the case of having, let's say two slots, then we would get star 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 plus plus star plus plus. So that will work for any number now. And now that we have any number that we need, we can use any because any of these need to pass for this to work right? If we can make any of the combinations of sequences work, then one of them works. And that's all we need. We only need one to work. So inside of this, we take that vec, which is a vec of cars, which is either plus or multiplication. We turn that into an iterator that we can manually push forward, right? So this gives us an iterator of cars, and we can use that iterator to do s.next to just get the next item. So we don't need to do anything fancy here. We don't need to combine them with zip. We don't need to do anything like that. Just anytime we want the next operator, we hit next s.next. Now I've written this maybe in a way that I should refactor. <laughs> Let's do let result equals this number chain and then maybe test equals result at the, at the bottom. So this is our real test, right? We wanna take this number and determine if the chain of operators that we've constructed from the multi-Cartesian product actually results in the same number. So in this case, we take those numbers, we iterate over them, 
In this case, we're copying them so that the references match up. Numbers are copyable. You might, if you're newer, have a better time thinking of this as cloning them. So we're making copies of them rather than sharing references around. It's pretty cheap to copy numbers, so I'm not worried about that at all. Then we use reduce, which will take the first item in our iterator and use it as the accumulator and give us the second item over and over and over. So we'll have the accumulator, which is this. I'll add ACC here. And then we have the next number. And maybe I just expand this and say next number. So we were matching on the next item from the sequence of operators. And if it's star, then we do a multiplication. If it's plus, then we do an addition. And if it's anything else, it's totally invalid and we panic. Now it's possible that this wouldn't work. In our case, it is not possible that it wouldn't work. So we unwrap the reduce and we end up with a U64 result. We do the test. If that test passes, then we have then sum, which is a function on Booleans. And we'll wrap test in sum, which will put it back through the filter map, turning it into a U64, which we then sum all of the things that passed the test up. Now, there seems to be a third type of operator, the concatenation operator, combines the digits from its left and right inputs into a single number. So 12 and 345 would become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All operators are still evaluated left to right. Now, apart from the three equations that could be made true, the above example has three more equations. And then adding up all those test values gives us a new value. So it's the same thing with an additional operator. So we'll copy this whole thing in, drop it into part two, change the value here, start working part two. Uh, we have the additional pipe pipe here, uh, which is unfortunate because we were using cars and now we can't. I don't think that actually matters though. The additional operator doesn't actually need to be pipe pipe. So let's just make it pipe and we'll say car three here because we don't need to parse it. So we don't really need to do anything with it. So it doesn't matter that this is actually the wrong uh, thing to do or the, the wrong character to use. So we can do something really silly here and format dot parse u64. So we format and then parse and that I think has to be returned. The parse has to succeed, which I think it always will. So I'm going to unwrap here. And then I think our test just passed. So that was hopefully that easy, adding the operator, dealing with what the operator needs to be able to do, which is format, parse, and return the number. Let's run this against part two and, oh, I'm running Clippy. <laughs> I was wondering why I wasn't getting output. I'm running Clippy against part two. Let's run part two here. This is taking a couple seconds, so I'm going to run release. This is one of the dangers of doing brute force uh, for advent of code. The possibility is that if you just brute force it like we just did, and you do the rules straightforward, I guess that's not really brute forcing, but if you do the rules straightforward, that is the right answer. We got part two, hooray. Uh, so if you, there is the possibility in Advent of Code, if you take the rules and you do them just like straightforwardly like we just did, uh, it's possible that this is not going to complete fast enough. I'm sure we'll see that in a future iteration of these problems. I think if we bench this, we're gonna get a similar result to yesterday where part one benches really quickly and part two takes a second. So I'm actually gonna let that benchmark run, I think. And we'll commit day seven and push it up. And in the meantime, you know, this is taking 10 milliseconds for part one, not too bad. For part two, it's gonna take, I think about two seconds total, uh, which is why the benchmark is taking so long. So it's interesting to note, and just as I'm about to do that, uh, we get our 1.7 <laughs> benchmark, 1.7 seconds for part two. Uh, it's interesting to note then that Rayon exists. And Rayon is really, really, really cool. One of the things that it allows us to do is, I guess we should just go for part one, let's say. And I'll add part one Rayon, add part one Rayon to the binary. And then we're in here, right? And we want to bring in use Rayon prelude star. We do have to grab Rayon. Uh, not in our dev dependencies, but in our actual dependencies for day seven. And then where can we put parallelization? Well, one really obvious place to do it is to do it at equations. So we can do equations parator, right? And then we're running, let's say part one here, make sure we get the right answer. So this is part one and this is part one rayon. See that we're getting the right answer correctly and we'll bench for part one. I think I actually didn't add the benchmark for rayon. Let me check. Did not add the benchmark for Rayon. I'll copy this over, make this our part one Rayon bench, and we'll bench part one, and we end up with a one-tenth time reduction. So part one takes 10 milliseconds with Rayon 
on the equations, because the equations are the most obvious place to do parallelization, it's 1.7 seconds or 1.7 milliseconds. So then what does that mean for part two? It's hilarious that actually setting this up probably takes longer than implementing rayon. So we can go into part two rayon, we can do use rayon prelude star, and we can look at equations.iter and change it to par iter. Let's do a cargo bench for part two rayon only, because I don't want this to run forever and the two second or the 1.7 seconds that we had uh, before for part two did take a really long time to benchmark. And already it's done because we've cut down our runtime from 1.7 seconds to about 370 to 400 milliseconds, depending on which one you're looking at here. So the Rayon docs actually do a pretty good job of explaining what's going on here, how it works. And I think it does a really interesting job of showing just how powerful Rust type system and the approach Rust takes in general is. The fact that we can just drop power iter on an iterator and parallelize our program is incredible. Obviously this isn't a algorithmic speed up. We're not skipping any computation here. All we're doing is throwing a par iter on the equations. And if we look at the actual input, some of these are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. But some of these are three. It doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to parallelize like the three option because there's only four options to check or rather nine options to check. But if we debug the seek.length here, let's do it on not bench, let's do it on run for part two rayon so it'll run pretty quickly. Did I not add the binary? Part two underscore rayon. Oh, right, I need to specify the binary. And we're looking at 10 operator options or rather a length of 10 operators. And if we count the number of options here and we debug that out, the numbers get significantly higher. So this one has almost 60,000 options. This one has 177,000. So some of these clearly could benefit potentially from parallelizing checking the options, while some of these really won't. So we could try to be fancier about how we did parallelization here, but getting such a good improvement from just throwing power iter on here is also great. And if you're running into some of these problems where maybe you've coded a suboptimal solution, it's taking a little longer than you want it to, but you're using iterators, you can drop some <laughs> magical rayon dust on it and get a nice parallel speed up in some cases. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I am probably gonna make that visualization video for day six, maybe some of the other days, we'll see. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.